platform which harnesses and maps out Singapore's marine and coastal data to be made public. It could bolster the fight against climate change. And we're going to wade deeper into this issue with our next two guests. Dr. John Nyberg is a UN expert and co-chairs the Marine Geospatial Information Working Group. He is in Singapore for the seminar today. And he's joined by Perlin Pang from the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, who helped develop the geospace sea system in Singapore. Uh, Ms. Pang, uh, I will ask you the question first, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I take it your task, or you are very much in charge of this. So collecting and integrating marine and coastal information within Singapore. Uh, that, to me, seems to be riddled with challenges. Yes, indeed. There were actually two main challenges when we started out um, to develop Geospace Sea. First was how can we effectively manage the mass of information, hydrographic, marine and coastal data that were collected on our dynamic sea space over the decades? And second, how can we use the data and cast the net wider to other users to better serve our nation's and maritime sector's needs. And it was actually through collaboration with 11 other government agencies in Singapore and our IHLs and technical knowledge exchange from international working groups like the UNGGI Working Group on Marine Geospatial Information, the IHO Marine Spatial Data Infrastructures Working Group, and the OGC that we developed Geospace C to provide wider access to integrated marine data. And today we are seeing it drive transformation of processes and applications. All right, and before, as you before, mentioned, uh, coincidentally, uh, our three working groups are gathered here today. All right, uh, before I put the question to Dr. Nyberg, uh, very quickly, Ms. Punk, essentially you are having to make an informed decision about which choices to make, which pieces of information that are relevant, which ones are not over a long period of time, very quickly. Yes, so we provide, we make the marine geospatial data discoverable and accessible and applicable for government research industry and the public to drive marine knowledge and national development priorities and the sustainable development goals. Uh, that brings us to the next question to Dr. Nyberg. As Ms. Pang said, using this information, making it accessible, uh, how should this benefit the international maritime community? Well, it's a, that, that's a great question. And I think that it's important to note that about 40% of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers of the coast. Um, and, and as, as Perlin mentioned, uh, the effects of climate change, um, accurate marine geospatial information is critical for informed decision making. Um, so if you consider how sea level rise or storm surge might impact a coastal community, people, and infrastructure. Um, you need accurate marine geospatial information at your fingertips. And if you do, you'll have a much better chance of being fully prepared to limit the impacts of environmental challenges um, for today and into the future. Um, I think that also it's a, extremely important for marine transportation moving forward. Um, it can, it can impact the, it, it can help with the environmental impacts and it can create um, better opportunities for streamlined navigation, um, uh, you know, to move goods and services on the ocean. All right, uh, Ms. Pang, uh, Dr. Nyberg mentioned accuracy. Uh, I take it uh, this is an ongoing thing. You never, you can never say this is the most accurate set of data we have and the most relevant. This is something that will continue to develop and therefore something that you need to continue building on in this system. How will Singapore continue to do that in our geospace system? Yes, as, as John mentioned, um, priorities like climate change, sea level rise and sustainable development is important for Singapore as well. So just basically is presently accessible to our participating government agencies users to support evidence-based decision making. And earlier today, SMS Chi Hongta announced that the opening of the International Seminar on UNGGIM, Effective and Integrated Marine Geospatial Information, that Geospacy will be open to public users from August this year. 
and we hope Geospacy would be an enabler for solutions produced through government academic industry partnerships and citizen-led innovation. Oh, Dr. Nyberg, a final question for you. Oh, given the amount of information and the depth of it, coastal information, maritime information, you are actually sharing uh, fairly sensitive information, sensitive to each country. Have you found any challenges getting different countries on board to share and use the system? Yeah, I, I, it, it is. It can be challenging according to... Uh, law in, in, in each country. But um, I think that cross-border cooperation is absolutely critical. You know, as, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, waterborne commerce is international. Fish do not respect national boundaries. And your neighbor's marine debris might end up on your beach. So, you know, coordinating marine geospatial information is a criti critical part of predicting, preventing, and addressing these challenges. Um, we're using our global institutions, uh, as Perlin mentioned, like the United Nations Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management and the International Hydrographic Organization. Um, you know, and they're working with the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore to facilitate this work. And um, a meeting like this, uh, the seminar this week, is, is a critical part of getting countries to work together um, so we have the data to best meet the challenges of our future. Our oh, thanks both of you, Dr. John Nyberg, the co-chair of the Marine Geospatial Information Working Group and Perlin Pang from Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore.